If you're happy and you know it, clap your hooves. If you're angry and you know it, bottle it up until you cannot contain it anymore and your field of vision violently cuts to a view of a limp and bruised body. Greetings from Duskmire. As a side announcement before the big news story of the day, Trotcadero, the remarkably silly stallion whom had just recently performed the Trocadero performance piece The Dying Swan just last week. Oh, now I get it. Trocadero is the form of ballet commonly performed by an all-stallion cast in a predominantly mare-focused role and is used both as a display of the prancer's skills and as a parody of the more tragic stories of the art form. And in this case, the name of the performer was Trotcadero. Trotcadero. Trocadero. Wow, I can't believe I never saw that. The horse pun Illuminati is really impressive when it comes to performing their duties to ensure everything on the planet reminds us somehow of our equine ancestry. I almost missed that. Good job, horse pun Illuminati. Good job. Now where was I? Oh, right. <clears throat> Trotcadero has informed me via Tweetbird that his incredibly gorgeous twin sister, Elegant Steps, is still accepting applications for ballet prancing lessons for the additional early course for fillies and colts. Little Fructose Syrup's application a couple weeks back is what triggered this brilliant inspiration of hers, I do believe. He is also informing me that he feels uncomfortable with my continuous reference to his sister's attractive features and my apparent inversely active mentionings of his. His key argument is that they are twins, and they look exactly the same aside from their hairstyles, individuality insignias, or cutie marks as that little weirdo keeps on calling them, and gender-specific features such as snout shape and mane size. You know, that reminds me. Did you know that in some cultures, a large mane is considered a powerful symbol of physical attractiveness, considered more important than the most well-known feminine aspect of the mare body? Yes, even more important than the eyelashes. That would explain most of their ponies' admiration of Trocadero's rather bulbous, curved, and voluptuous ponytail mane and ponytail... tail. Or maybe they're just admiring his pronounced prancer's flank. I must admit, listeners, as a veteran prancer myself, I am a little jealous. Oh, sorry about that, listeners. It seems station management is starting to waft under the crack in the doorway to the sound room until the mist that makes up their body concentrates itself into the vague shape of a pony with imposing, glowing purple eyes. They appear to be staring daggers at me right now. And, ow, the daggers are actually starting to sting a little as they pierce my flesh, and that means I've gone off topic again, so let's get to the news. <clears throat> There is a pair of vague yet menacing foreign shoulders. <laughs> shoulders? That's not correct. Could you please proofread this next time, Skater Flitter? Thank you. Sorry, folks. Now let me be sad that again. There is a pair of vague yet menacing soldiers patrolling the city of Duskmire. These soldiers are wearing golden armored saddles, golden shin guards, flank guards, and hoof guards, and helmets that appear to have broom bristles along the vertical of the scalp, parallel to the snout, in a mohawk-like fashion, akin to the ancient civilization of Hufticuffia, the Earth Pony civilization known for its military speciality and for being completely obliterated when a nearby candy mountain let loose a torrent of white-hot liquid sugar to engulf the area instantly, with those left behind being dramatically transformed. At this point, the only ones that wear such armor are the royal guards of the equestrian royalty. Of course, their authority does not apply to our fair city, as local billionaire Golden Brown has provided so many financial contributions that the collective donation totals have resulted in our city's complete and absolute political and diplomatic immunities. His additional purchases at the time include 37 tons of gold ore from a diamond dog mine, a vial of the necrotizing sacrosis virus that was recovered from the remains of Hufticuffia, and more recently, he has obtained a crystal containing the psychological ability to remain calm for longer than five minutes. Apparently, this mental capacity once belonged to a rock-farming, pink-maned filly, whom at this time is now a resident of the nearby town that somehow can put up with her incredibly annoying behavior. Well, when they eventually get tired of her nonsense, I'm sure she will feel right at home here. We even have our own hyperactive pony resident here in Duskmire, whom was sent into the forest our city has been founded in, and yet the same nearby town uses a place of exile. The mayor is named Random Bedlam, and she is a pony that is made entirely out of rubber. Ow! Right, I'm off topic again. Sorry. <clears throat> Goodness. When asked for a comment regarding the vague yet menacing foreign soldiers, Golden Brown said, Eh, they'll buy something eventually. 
He then dove from a diving board and splashed headfirst into a swimming pool filled with precious gemstones, and after servicing, he spat out a curved stream of tiny pearls and sapphires as if the group of carved rocks were a collective liquid. And now, a word from our sponsors. This message has been brought to you by the Ruthnakar, Ruthnakar Kuthnakar, that which is, shall always be. Now, many of you listeners have been calling in via the Scrying Gem network we all share through the required magical crystals we have installed in our respective spinal column regarding the new bus stops. While it is of concern that the buses themselves are not buses, but in actuality, giant translucent orbs with molecule-wide wheels propping each of them up, with them slowly rolling throughout town and not stopping anywhere but the bus stop they were called to, via the falling blood of a potential passenger on the bloodstone that makes up the bus stop. Test tube, our town's resident scientist, has just appeared from within one of them. He now has an eye patch over his left eye, and his entire right hoof has been replaced with a metallic prosthetic hoof. Eyewitnesses claim that the underside of the hoof has an arcane-looking, highly advanced technological appearance. The vague yet menacing foreign soldiers both paused to look at the scene, and one of them levitated a small notebook in front of the other soldier, whom had grabbed a quill from their satchel with their mouth and began writing furiously. Meanwhile, Test Tube immediately demanded an audience with the Queen about time-sensitive information of future events. Of course, Her Royal Majesty's covert law enforcement agency took his claim very seriously, as they have a full list of every scrying gem in town, and apparently, Test Tube's scrying gem is currently letting out two of the exact same signal at this point. When asked for a comment about this, the present-day Test Tube clasped his hooves over his ears and said, I can't hear you, la 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 la, even if you are not lying, I cannot know about it to prevent disrupting a potential chronological loop through time travel, la 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 la. He kept on saying, la 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 la, until the reporter left the laboratory. Hey, speaking of translucent orbs, do you know about that big glowing disc in the sky that illuminates the day? You know, the sun? Do you know about that other translucent crescent that illuminates the night? The moon? Did you know that they're both the same sphere? I mean, think about it. You never see them both in the sky at the same time. Now, vocal fry, you may say. Aren't the sun and moon different shapes? Well, that is just an optical illusion. Just like those moments when you think you see the sun and moon in the sky at the same time on opposite ends of the sky at the same point of the day. What about solar or lunar eclipses, you ask? Well, those are just magical portals opening the sky that open at indeterminate times during the year to send out the magical beings of our world to their places of origin, like flutter ponies, breezies, and kobolds. These portals tend to be more likely to open when some young filly or colt has been naughty during the past year. So you had all best be good as you can be, so nobody blames you for yet another breezy infestation. On an unrelated note, we do still have a surplus of the rainbow-colored hay bacon with entomological antennae and delicate wings shaped like elongated teardrops. So be good, young foals, and listen to your mothers, fathers, and monarchically assigned guardian surrogates. This has been... The Foles Fun Fact Science Corner. Update on the vague yet menacing foreign soldiers. While they appear to be doing nothing at all of note, they do seem to be taking careful note of a large number of things themselves, such as the number of our city citizens, their unique physical qualities and attributes, and the number of spires placed strategically throughout town to provide enough visibility to ensure our community members can find them quickly enough to prevent tardiness tasings. One hawk-eyed listener has noted that they each seem to have something in each of their left ears connected to a spiraling cord latched into a small black box. Meanwhile, Her Royal Majesty's covert law enforcement agency is observing their actions very, very closely in return, under the undercover agent strategically placed at a myriad of locations around town. 
agents whom I will not recite examples of, both because of the covert law enforcement agents making a horizontal slashing pantomime across his neck with his hoof, and also for the sake of their work integrity in the event this broadcast is being monitored somehow by the vague yet menacing foreign soldiers. Not that mentioning them would help anyway, as every member of Her Royal Majesty's covert law enforcement agency is very skilled in the art of disguise. I am just now getting a confirmation that this signal is not, in fact, being intercepted by the vague yet menacing foreign soldiers in any way, shape, or form, so allow me a brief editorial. Ahem. These vague yet menacing foreign soldiers have very, very, very silly-looking armor. They look like they smell terrible, and I bet they are also communists. I am not entirely sure what communism is, but according to this file, stamped with the profile of a horse eye overimposed on a pyramid, it is definitely a bad thing, because ancient humans said so. Also, both of those soldiers have very large flanks that also smell bad and may very well be the source of said maleficent odor to begin with. And unlike the large flank of one Trotcadero, these vague yet menacing foreign soldiers do not presumably hold the excuse of being professional prancers in their favor. Odd. Just a second, listeners. I need to ask station management something. Excuse me, why didn't the mist daggers that you jabbed into my body attempt to rotate to cause more pain? Didn't I get off topic again? Editorials are an exception. Okay, I'll try to remember that. Thank you. <clears throat> and we are back. Sorry about that, listeners. I just wanted to check with station management about their ethical management techniques. Oh, it looks like there's a new development on the vague yet menacing foreign soldiers. I can tell this is happening because my field of vision has suddenly cut to the visual perspective of intern Skitterflitter, whom is transmitting his observance of the vague yet menacing foreign soldiers to me right now, while continuously proofreading next time a broadcast script, and most likely presumably after the covert law enforcement high commander's approval. It looks like Golden Brown has decided to approach them. Skitter, if you can hear me, can you see if you can't get closer so any of the conversation you hear can reach me also? That way I can relay it live over the program. Thank you. <clears throat> Here we go. And from the perspective of you listeners, you may not hear his responses, but Skitter Flitter is capable of transmitting his response to me directly via the intern attachment to his scrying chimp. Oh. Golden Brown has now just said, Um, hey, you weird-looking soldier guys, or girls, or... Whatever, I can't tell what you are under that goofy armor gender was. Um, here's the deal. I technically own this town financially, so when this kind of stuff happens, I like to help out the queen and look into it. In exchange, she does all the leadership garbage that I don't want to do because it's boring and lame. So, um, um, are you gonna buy anything, or do I need to give you both a ridiculous amount of bits to make you leave? Five thou each sounds okay, right? He then grabbed a pair of large sacks with the symbol for equestrian bits on it, which I remind you is the letter E with two parallel lines vertically crossed through it, and each of these bags is tossed to each of them. The vague yet menacing foreign soldiers shake their heads no, saying nothing, and walk around the pairs of bundle of coins. What? Golden Brown continued. You don't want to take them? Well, that kind of stinks. I guess you'll just have to take them. The coins then individually began to float in the air from within a golden ore that then proceeds to jettison the coins toward the vague yet menacing foreign soldiers. The coins begin to simply ricochet off the armor with a soft tink for each of them, until the coins begin to strike them by the dozen. At this point, they begin to large themselves into the armor of these soldiers. When one of them, the one with the gray coat, turns to glare at the source of the attack, a stray coin strikes the soldier in the temple and knocks the soldier out. Yes, the other soldier, whom we now know as a mare due to her voice, is quickly turning, grabbing the other soldier with her teeth, and is now carrying the knocked out soldier to a location now, while screaming out to seemingly no one, Stallion down! Stallion down! Fall back from medical assistance! Repeat! Fall back from medical assistance! And now, well, listeners, apparently, we have a guest in the studio. Judging by the pink coat, the red and white striped mane, the bulbous bubble butt flank, and the goofy candy cane-shaped ponytail mane style, I'm under the assumption that it is Trot Cadero. He is also carrying with him a clothing satchel, presumably because he is going to do laundry. Intern Mixtape appears to be nodding in approval over something, and he is giving Mixtape a form... 
And from the angle on this side of the window, I believe it is a radio program announcement requisition form that has been approved by a member of Her Royal Majesty's covert law enforcement. So, let's give a warm welcome to Trot Cadero, our resident valet planseur, broadcasting to us here in the station over his own scrying jam. Trot, it's good to hear from you. Thank you, Vogel Fry. Everyone, I'm sorry that I'm interrupting the program with this, but... My sister, Elegant Steps, has recently told me that I am... that I should step down as co-owner of the Dance Academy. I will now be specializing in basic lessons for the younger members of the community that wish to practice. I am a little worried personally, since this change only recently happened when she started wearing an old jade comb she found in a jewelry box covered in thick chains and padlocks. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, that's truly terrible. Whatever. Anyway... The reason I'm sending out this message is a bit more personal. I think you'll call it an editorial, right? I think that I... She, my sister, is a remarkably lonely mare. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons we left is because we heard that Duskmire is a bit more... accommodating regarding differences between certain kinds of ponies, including... romantic species preferences, like, say, preferring to date hypothetically existent creatures that I am not allowed to talk about. Now, Trot Kadera, before you continue, I do need to point out to our listeners that insectoid equine replicants are not real. You do realize that, right? Uh, yes, that is what I was referring to, actually. That, Which is why I believe that she's throwing herself into her work, because she still doesn't think that she'll be accepted entirely for her... Admiration of such clearly make-believe and weirdly beautiful creatures, because she is whom I am talking about and no one else. So, since she is too busy to tune into this radio broadcast, let alone come over and ask directly, I am going to surprise her by setting her up on a blind date. With you. A, 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 a blind date with... with me? Uh, yes. She will be waiting outside the communication spire for you after your broadcast is over for the day. You will know it's her because her mane will be done up in bun, just like normal, but because she will be just leaving her studio, she will be wearing the traditional uh, dance attire. You know, black tights, the black dance skirt, slippers, all four hooves, leotard, and the black masquerade ball mask, which, as I've said, is a traditional attire for the head teacher, uh, Oskmeyer, I believe. I myself will be busy at the time as well, so no pony in the community should try to contact either of us over our scrying jams. At all. Until tomorrow. And that's my message. I'm going to go now to do those things that I will be busy with. Until tomorrow. Okay, see you later. Well, um, thank you, Trot Cadero, for that announcement and civilian editorial. And I do believe that by a very strange coincidence that it is almost time for today's broadcast to conclude, which means that it is time for Fructose Syrup to read today's letter to Queen Lycra. Or she would if today wasn't her bi-weekly dance lesson. Bit of a bad luck there, I'm afraid. Oh well, today's letter is from... Aw, it's from Fructose Syrup. That's a delightful coincidence, isn't it? Now let's see. Her letter reads... Uh, let me look here. Here we go. Dear Queen Lycra, Today I learned that sometimes being special can be a little bit dangerous. That's why it's okay to hide some of those things about yourself from others, not just because you care about them, but also as long as it's because you don't want to scare any pony away. Also, I learned that being made of candy doesn't mean that I have to keep on pulling off so many silly puns about candy, no matter how fondant I am of them. But if the chance still comes along, Alphenic, I will still try to nab it. Signed, Fructose Syrup. Yes, I'm sure that there are some of our community members that have very, very good reasons to keep certain aspects of themselves hidden regarding very personal secrets about themselves. That is why Census Week is so important. It is the one time of the year that we air out those kinds of secrets to prevent psychological traumas, and by doing so at an appointed time rather than early or late, We do not risk recompense or punishment for admittance of things about ourselves that may or may not be important, or revealing that which we must deny is real any other day of the year in order to remain mentally stable and prevent psychological paranoia. An annual airing of such things helps to prevent psychological breaks. 
And speaking of breaks, it is now time to take a break from our broadcast for the day. A break from that broadcasting as such. We, we, you get the idea. Stay tuned next for the softly dimming giggling of an excited young colt about to go on a date with the target of his affection. Good night, Duskmire, and good morrow. <coughs> Greetings from Duskmire is a fan podcast written by Jordan Hofling. The voice of Duskmire is also Jordan Hofling. The voice of Trotskadero is also Jordan Hofling. Greetings from Duskmire as a pan podcast is inspired by Welcome to Night Vale, which is produced by Commonplace Books, and My Little Pony, which is produced and owned by Hasbro. For more episodes, go to greetings-from-duskmire.tumblr.com for not only more podcast episodes, but occasionally a script for upcoming ones.